This is my take on the Panasonic 35-100mm to f4-5.6 to compact zoom. It's a fairly short review because 35-100 to in full frame 70-200mm to millimeter is a staple of all lens makers, so everyone is familiar with the focal range. It covers length from portrait to medium telephoto and combined with a standard kit zoom covers the essential focal lengths for general purpose photography. The lenses designated professional covering this sort of range will be f2.8 with a constant aperture. They tend to be relatively bulky, expensive and have class leading sharpness. Below the top glass, lenses covering regions around 35 to 100 or 150 mm are usually f3.5 or 4 to 5.6 smaller, lighter, cheaper and optically less accomplished. This lens is different. It is not smaller, it is tiny. It is not less accomplished, it is approaching the best. Let's take a look. First, like its 12 to 32 mm stable mate, its carrying and using length are different because it collapses in on itself when stowed. That does slow down start-up times from camera switch on to taking a picture, but you can always leave it extended ready for use when not stowed. Let's face it, if it extended it is hardly big. It comes with a bayonet fitting lens hood which folds back over the lens for compact storage. A warning, because of its size it is easy to lose the hood as I have and no replacement is available. It has the same stabilisation as its bigger brothers, but no on lens on off switch. If you use it on a tripod, you could switch stabilisation off in the menu. It has a zoom ring and a slim but easy to use manual focus ring and that's it. In use, the lens feels smooth to focus, but the zooming doesn't have the silky touch you get with the more expensive Olympus and Panasonic lenses. In reality, you can't expect that at this price with a plastic bodied lens. If you shake the lens, it rattles. It's the stabilisation and perfectly normal. The 35 to 100 to 8 rattles too, but it has a deeper, better quality rattle in keeping with its higher status. I often hear from photographers concerned that the rattle is a fault, and not at all happy to be told that it is normal. It reminds me of an old Tommy Cooper joke, of a bloke who goes to his doctor and tells him, Doc, when I do this it hurts, and the doctor responds, well my advice is, don't do that. Overall, I describe the feel of the lens as functional. It's nicely made, and while for me there's no great pleasure in using it, its size and performance means I'm never reluctant to use it. Talking of performance, it is remarkable. My highly unscientific tests put it more or less on a par with its three times the price F28 sibling. Here are some pull-ups at 35 and 100mm, all at 5.6. Note that while the little lens looks less sharp at 35mm, these are enormous 500% pull-ups. I represent the view on a monitor more than 22,000 pixels across, or a professional quality 300 dpi print more than 6 feet around 200 centimeters wide. At any normal magnification or viewing distance for such large media, they are indistinguishable. There are no notable distortion or purple fringing problems in normal use. What there are, and a high contrast lighting at the edge of the frame, are easily eliminated. Vignetting is there, but no different to any other lens of similar type and not a problem. The lens has the newest Panasonic high speed 240 frames per second focusing, so its focus speed is up to the full capability of the GH4 and GM5 bodies, though I can detect no difference when using the GX7, instantaneous is instantaneous. That's it really, this lens is unique. There's nothing that comes close to it in size terms. You do pay a small price premium for the size, but that price also includes top optical performance. The obvious cameras for it are the ultra small GM1 and GX5, or the Olympus Pen EPL range, but it matches the GX7 particularly well, and would suit the Olympus EM10 as well I imagine. Having both this and the F2835-100, how would I choose which to use? Neither sharpness, stabilisation or speed of focusing favour either one. The 35-100-2.8 feels solid, smooth and balanced and has a massive two-stop speed advantage at 100mm. It would always be my first choice because it will cope with anything and I love using it. To gain affordability and pocketability, compromises have to be made and Panasonic have made them shrewdly using lighter construction and a limited aperture. If you can't afford one of the bigger, faster, pro medium telephoto zooms, this is the one to buy.
The essentials, sharpness, focusing and stabilisation in this little lens are not compromised for the price. Even if you can afford one of the Pro lenses, this might still be a better buy. Given the all-round performance of this lens, you could argue that the size of it is just a bonus rather than the reason for buying it. A lens that is constantly to hand and unobtrusive in use will frequently be worth more than a stop or two extra light gathering power. Here's a lens that embodies the spirit of why I love Micro Four Thirds equipment. Just as good, only smaller. Thanks for watching.